Hey guys, in this video I want to do another tutorial about FreeSurfer. In this one I'm going to discuss the two separate processes that are how to process high field data, which it considers high field to be 7 Tesla data, and I'm also going to talk about how to do high resolution recon all. And so it considers high resolution to be any scan that is sub millimeter, so less than one millimeter isotropic for the voxel size is considered high resolution and I guess anything above a 3 tesla would be high field but it's talking specifically about 3 tesla scanners which some labs have now and are becoming more common. So you can do just one tutorial or you can do both if you have high field and high resolution scans. So for this video I'm going to show you the results that I got from a scan that was both. So it was a 7700 micron file that we processed using both of these techniques. All right, so I'm going to first discuss how the tutorial describes how to do high field data and then I'll go into the high resolution afterwards. So it's a pretty short tutorial here for high field data. It pretty much just says that when you have 7T data, you're going to have a stronger problem with inhomogeneity than you would at the three Tesla scanners. So you want to basically just do one step before you do normal recon all all, which is to get a bias corrected image. And and FreeSurfer doesn't actually let you create a bias corrected image within its own software, so it recommends that you use SPM 12. If you do that, you have to go or either get Octane, I guess, maybe, it, I don't know actually if SPM runs on Octane, or if you have MATLAB, which is what I have, then you have to go to SPM and specifically you have to use SPM 12 to get a bias corrected image. So let me pull up SPM, it's loading now, and I'll show you what it's talking about. Actually, Actually, this was a little confusing to me in, be in the beginning because I wasn't that familiar with SPM 12 or SPM in general and it said you have to use the unified segmentation algorithm so I was confused what that means but after I did a little bit of reading that's just what it calls the segmentation button in SPM 12 because I guess older versions of SPM used to segment the tissues in a different way and this new way that they created for SPM 12 uh, does six tissue segmentation as you can see when you pull up the segment button and that's just what they're calling their unified segmentation algorithm. So when you go to SPM, it will show this box, then you click the segment button and this box will show up. For this box, you just have to put in a couple things. So you have to put in the nifty file, which is your volume, which is the uncorrected file. So I have that in my desktop folder here and you'll see these files, I've actually already run everything. So that's why all these files are here, but I'm just gonna do a run through of what it would be. So this is a nifty file that I got just from putting in the DICOMs and and putting them through DICOM to Nifty to get the Nifty. So it's just a normal Nifty and nothing's been done to it. I don't change any of the defaults that SPM uses. So if you're wondering what all these things are, I wouldn't worry about it. I just leave them as the defaults. And it does say here that it has some recommendations for how you want to bias correct your images. So this part was actually a little bit confusing to me. Actually, if anyone knows what this is talking about, please leave a comment down below because it says that you should do the full width HM at 18, but if you go here, bias FWHM, the actual specification of the number, you can't pick 18, and it only gives you choices, so I tried, if you click specify, you can't actually type in the number that you want, so you can't actually type in 18, so I'm a little bit confused why FreeSurfer suggests 18 when you can't use 18. The smallest value you can use is 30 millimeters, and so when I first ran this, I ran it a couple different ways, because I wasn't sure which value I wanted. So I tried 30 millimeters, I tried 60, which is the default for SPM, and I also tried 150 just to see what it looked like. And yeah, I think that the smaller numbers are better, so I think 30 millimeter will work the best, but again, if you're in a lab, you can try running them a couple different ways. This segmentation step only takes like 10 to 15 minutes, so you can produce the different images quickly. And actually what we're doing is, SPM is going to segment the volumes of the nifty that you give it into different tissues like gray matter, white matter, and all of that, CSF and everything. And you don't need that. What you actually need is just the bias corrected images here. So here's the option save bias corrected. The default says save nothing. You want to change that to save bias corrected. That's going to save a nifty file with the prefix M. I think somewhere 
in here you can change what the prefix is. Actually, no, I guess that's another SPM box, but sometimes you can specify how you want the file to be saved. But this saves it as uh, M and then whatever the name is of the file you input. And this will be the bias corrected image and I'll show you what it looks like. The rest of the defaults you don't change. And again, down here, sampling distance, the free surfer tutorial suggests two and the default is three. So here you can actually specify just whatever value you wanted, but for the size of the bias correction, you can't put in the value 18, but here you can put in two. So I changed it to two, and then when you're ready, you run everything by clicking the green button. And again, like I said, that takes about 10 to 15 minutes. MATLAB will tell you when it's done. It's loading right now. So I have everything run already, so I don't have to wait. I'm going to exit out and just show you the files that are produced. These are the segmented files that it produces, and I don't know if there's any way of getting the bias corrected image without segmenting, but I'm not sure how to do that, if that's even possible. But these are files that you really don't need, so you can delete them. So I'm just going to say move to trash. And this is the bias corrected image that SPM produces. So I can't pull up both at the same time with MRI cron, but this is the uncorrected. And my lab actually does a really good job with acquiring 70 images. As you can see, it looks pretty good. Actually, I don't think the inhomogeneity is bad at all. As you can tell, the main difference is going to be that the cerebellum does not look great and we basically just don't consider this volume at all. We pretty much just consider supratentorial volumes. But if I can just go between the two files kind of quickly, you see that if you remembered before, this is kind of like a darker area in the original image. And so now it's kind of picking up these bottom values and it depends on the quality of your 70 images, but it can really, doing bias correction can really improve it a lot. And we'll see the difference in the output when these two files are run through FreeSurfer. So yeah, if you look, it does look better. Another thing that is common with the uncorrected image is that the anterior part might be a little bit darker and that's corrected as well with this bias correction. Okay, so that's it for the first step. And then it just says as the second step, run recon all as usual with your bias corrected image as input. And this is assuming that you don't have sub millimeter files, but I do for the sample one that I was using. So it says if you do have right high resolution, then there's another step that you have to do. So let's go ahead and move on to that. So for sub millimeter, there's another tutorial page. This one you can run with just the stable version that's released right now, which is 5.3. This one says that you do need the developer's version. So you have to go to the bottom in the download screen if your version is older than August 2015. And you have to download that version. And also it says here, it really depends what your resolution is for how you run this tutorial. So high resolution will mean different things to different labs. So it says here specifically that they're considering 750 micron as their high resolution and the tutorial is really geared towards that. If it's less than 500 microns, basically this tutorial still doesn't work yet and they're working on making it available in future versions. But for now it doesn't. And actually my scan is 700 microns. So it's a little bit less than the one that they're suggesting you use, but it still worked when I used it. So how do you do uh, the recon all pipeline for high resolution data? Again, it's pretty simple. So as you can see here, I have the latest stable release, which is 5.3, but I don't have the developers build. I already ran this data on my work computer using the developers build. So I have all the files that were processed already. So I'm too lazy to pretend to download the developers build for this tutorial, but just pretend that this says developers build. And if you're running the tutorial, you definitely have to get the right download, but I'm just going to pretend. So I already have a folder with the bias corrected high field image. And this is again, an example doing high field, but if you're not doing high field, you just get the high resolution nifty folder open. And then it says when you're doing recon all, you input the file that you're going to use, give it whatever subject name you want. So let's say seven T700 corrected. Then it says you have to have a high res tag or a CM tag. I always just do the high res tag. And then the second step is besides the high res tag, you have to add what's called an expert file. So the expert file needs a tag that's dash expert. And you need to have an expert file in the same folder with your high resolution image. So in here, I have the high resolution image. I'm going to open a text editor 
folder, so text edit, and I'm going to create a new file. And the file is going to say how many times I want to manually inflate the cortical surface as it's running through Recon All. So if you read this blurb here, it says that you have to have an expert file, and the expert file has to specifically say the number of times you're going to inflate the image. The default for FreeSurfer is 10, but that's for one millimeter or larger voxel size. It says here that you want to do more than 10 for your high resolution data and the number that you put in depends on the resolution. So it says for 750 micron you want to do 15 iterations and instead of 10. So your expert file would have this exactly copied and pasted into it and FreeSurfer will read that file and run that manually. It says here if you read this blurb again that in the future they're going to try to automate the process so FreeSurfer will be able to tell automatically the voxel size that you're inputting and determine for itself how many times to inflate it but for now you have to do it manually. Again it, the tutorial is lacking a little bit because it doesn't tell you how many times for different voxel sizes other than 750 micron. For my data since it was 700 micron I was putting in 17 and I couldn't I didn't really know where to find the proper number because I tried looking it up online but I didn't see any research data you know a table that would tell you the recommended number so I don't know if that's too many or too few iterations but that's what I did and I'm going to make this plain text that's fine and I'm going to save this file and it's saved with an options uh, file extension so I'm going to save it expert.opts and I'm going to save it to my desktop and then just drag it over to the folder that I have my file in. So if I add the expert option file to my recon all process and I have the high res tag, then that should run correctly. I think if I click enter now because I don't have the correct release of FreeSurfer, the right FreeSurfer version, it's going to run with errors. So I'm not even going to bother clicking enter. I'm just going to exit out of that because I already have the files successfully run Run, and I put them in my FreeSurfer folder so we can look at them but it should run if you have the right version correctly and it actually takes a long time as well. I have a uncorrected and corrected version of FreeSurfer so that we can compare the two. So this was corrected with high field with the high field tutorial and with the high resolution tutorial using a, the 30 millimeter bias. So if we look at that and we go into scripts and I look at the log it will actually tell me how long it it took to run. So it took actually 21 hours, almost 22 hours to run. The uncorrected version, let's see how much that takes. I think it takes like around 10 hours, but let me see. So it takes 15 minutes to run regular recon all, and if you do the high resolution, it takes like sometimes double the amount of time, but because sometimes I've seen recon all finish as fast as 7 hours, but it depends on your computer, and it also depends on the file input, but just expect it to take more time if you're doing the high resolution pipeline. Now if you wanted to compare the results, this is one of the first things I checked which was how is the parcellation and segmentation look using TK Medit. So I have the uncorrected and corrected files in my FreeSurfer subjects folder. So if I copy this, this will show me the uncorrected file on FreeSurfer's TK Medit, and then if I open another terminal window, I'll put the corrected one to compare. Oh, I have the wrong name for this one. This should be MP2 corrected 30 bias. Okay, so let me put the corrected one on the right and the uncorrected on the left. And it's a little bit cut out from view, but I have the little menu bar on the bottom. So as you can see here, both scans look pretty good. As you can see, when I what I noticed was that the high field correction, the bias, it helps in some regards, but it also might mess up the anterior temporal lobes. So this is uncorrected. As you can see here, the cerebellum is clearly cut off. So if we go to the slice 97 on here, and you can compare the two, and you see that the high field correction, especially the um, bias correction, it helps get a lot of the lower parts of the brain. So this 
this is the same slice and you can see the cerebellum is much more covered here. However, I would say both scans, you can see that the supertentorial volumes like above the cerebellum, they're both good in either case. So it doesn't really get cut off any of the major parts of the brain besides the cerebellum. If you go to the t anterior temporal lobes, so let's compare here. So this is slice 167. I can't remember how exactly it's going to show up here, but yeah, as you can see, it actually looks better on the uncorrected image. And the free surfer tutorial, let me pull it up again. For the high field, it says at the very bottom there might be a problem with misplacement, which you can manually correct. But I think that that is getting a little, they should basically just try to fix that because if you have to go back and manually check each one and correct each one, that's a little bit too much work for me anyway. So I think there's a trade off between using the high field correction for now anyway and not using it in general. The corrected one does look better, but again, there is that problem with the front. And let me see, I think the frontal lobes look fine in either case. This still looks like it's segmented pretty correctly. And obviously the brainstem will be better in the corrected as well. But again, it's a question of how important are those structures. You might think that the anterior temporal lobes are more important to get correctly. And then you might actually want to just continue using the uncorrected. And I don't have a good example here because I did just the high field and high res example in one, but I also think the high resolution data compared to non high res is not that different. I was expecting differences a little bit more noticeable, I guess, or a little bit more consistent. Uh, something else that I did to compare the two was to get the ASAG stats to table for both of them. So as you can see here, then I have the difference from the top value minus the bottom value. So I have the difference in voxel sizes of the volumes for the corrected minus the uncorrected. So a lot of these values are positive. So it's picking up more volumes in the corrected file, but it's not consistent again. So some of them are negative. So for example, if you, where is it? If you compare the hippocampus and the amygdala, the hippocampus is reported as smaller. Meanwhile, the amygdala is reported as bigger. I don't know why that would be exactly, but if you look here, it's bigger in both. So I feel like the values are not exactly consistent. I don't know enough about Free Surfer to really say whether this is an error or whether it's possible that these values could be right, but they don't really look as consistent as you'd want them to. It actually says that the supertentorial volume, so the volume above the cerebellum, is smaller in the corrected version versus the uncorrected. And again, that might be true because maybe the uncorrected was picking up volumes that were not actually part of the brain, but it's a little bit hard to say if that's true or not. And the overall total estimated intracranial volume is way bigger for the corrected. I'm thinking that's mostly for those bottom structures that were cut off in the end. But anyway, that's the idea with this tutorial. You can run it on your own data and see which looks like it's processing better. You might want to use these pipeline techniques, but then go back and do manual changes and do auto recon 2 or auto recon 3 on parts that you have manually fixed. And maybe that's how you can get the most accurate data processing. But it's good that they're working on this, especially the fact that they're working on high resolution data because it's really common for labs to do sub millimeter nowadays and 7T is becoming more common as well. It's good that they're working on automating the processes and including that in the auto recon all pipeline. But my overall opinion on it is that it's not quite there yet. It's not quite automated enough and it's not quite accurate enough, but it's still something interesting to look into. So thanks for watching the video and I'm going to continue making free surfer videos and I'm going to make a playlist. So if you thought this video was helpful, feel free to look at my other videos on Free Surfer or Neuroimaging as well.